Yo, what's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Prison Break Raw. I'm your host, the one and only Big JD. Go ahead, get this channel subscribed, share at least some messages and comments, thumbs up for the like, notification bell to be informed on all episodes that drop. Why is it that I say that communism is much like prison? Well, because it is, and anybody who's actually lived in a prison setting for many years, or a few years, or however long they've lived in it, you will know that you actually lived in kind of like a prototype communist country, because prison is much like a country in itself. Everybody pretty much gets the same. Nobody really pays for anything outside of commissary. Everything is provided to you according to your need. And you have a Gestapo, um, KGB-style secret police living over everybody, which is commonly referred to as the squad. And then you have COs and guard towers and gunners and everything all around you. These are all the same components of a communist country. And they could come to your cell at any given moment and snatch you up out of your bed and lock you up in a dungeon. Pretty much like a communist country from what we know about, right? And a lot of you out there would say, well, how do you know? Have you ever lived in a communist country? I personally haven't lived in one. But then again, neither has anybody else that's in this country that's pushing for this form of economics because it's not really a political system per se. And we're going to get down into a little kind of like a summary breakdown of how the idea of socialism came about, what its end goal is, and how it would basically develop a police state-like living situation for all people because there's only one road into Rome, and this is where it's going to end up. And I'm telling you that this is basically what we could be looking forward to the further we get into this divide. Because anytime we get into a divide that teeters on the brink of a revolution, the end result is already, always something that's more extreme than the last. You can look to anywhere in history, anywhere in the world, anywhere that has had a revolution break out or a political reversal or a civil uprising, or a coup, or anything to that nature, it's always been something worse, and it has always led to decay and ruin. Nothing will ever last forever. But let's go ahead and get into this contrast and comparison to how communism is just like prison. Now, this comes from information that I've received from people that I did time with. I was fortunate enough to meet several people that have done time in the former Soviet Union, people that done time in Castro's communist Cuba and several Vietnamese people that were living under the communist regime in Vietnam before coming to America years after the Vietnam War. So here's how it is. This is how I first started to take an interest in a lot of these political ideologies, these economic um, ideas and stuff, because I had one point in time in my life when I was much younger was kind of drawn to socialism, communism, and these things like that. I was um, exposed to it by a couple of people that ran in my car that were on that, on that time. I read the Communist Manifesto. I read the manuscripts of 1844. Um, was drawn to a lot of the symbolism of the hammer and sickle and the workers all standing with their fist up and the rising sun and, and, and the utopia and peace and prosperity for all mankind. I was lured into that image and that, that symbol of it all, much like a lot of people were lured into like national socialism under Nazi Germany or fascist Italy or fascist Spain. It's the symbols, the optics that kind of like reel you in, right? And pulls you into it because it's cool, man. I mean, a lot of the symbols and everything are cool. The ham hammer and sickle and all that stuff, the symbology of it, it's really fascinating. It's really cool, and, it, and it's interesting to see it in theory of what it could possibly mean for you. But the longer that I was in prison and the more that I started to read and the more that I started to expose myself to, because all of us that are in prison, and I think you know this well, because there's other YouTube personalities in, out there that use a lot of the literature that they have learned and they have adopted it into their own brand. But 
we have all been exposed to all of this material. For those of us that actually took the time to read it and didn't spend all of our time playing pinochle and, and gambling and trying to look for the next fix to get high on, for those of us that actually expanded our mind, we learned a great deal about our own environment in prison, and we started to see, I've had this conversation with many, that a prison setting was much like a communist country. And I got, it, I got that awakening from a man who was from Cuba, who had done time in prison in Cuba, was born and raised in Cuba, was there when Castro was put into power, and how they were all excited and happy, and how it didn't pan out to be what they were told that it was going to be. It was cool for a minute, but then it turned fucking bad real fast, and they couldn't wait to get the hell out of here, get the hell out of there, and the way that they got to this country was, I'm surprised that they're still alive. But he told me straight up, he goes, you're into that communism shit? Because he saw the communist manifesto that I had with me that I was carrying around. And I said, yeah, I think that, uh, that this is what this country needs. It needs a shift in, in, in Marxist ideology in order to bring equality to all the people. And he's like, you really think that that's what it does? Because that's not what it does. You've never lived in a communist country like I have. And I could tell you that what you are living in right now is much like what you are pushing to move towards. You are basically asking to be in prison forever, whether it be in here or a, a bigger prison outside. Because I'm going to tell you what it is. Everybody gets the same and everybody gets things according to their need. If you have a couple of kids, you will be given a proper amount of rations and everything you need to sustain you, to get you to that factory to work the next day, right? All your medical is taken care of. Of course, whenever your turn comes available to go see a doctor and get your medical concerns taken care of, that doctor will decide what you need as far as that medical treatment is concerned. Not what you think you need, but what you need. And it's always very limited. Yeah, people are, 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 have access to doctors. They don't have to pay no co-pays. They don't have to pay for medications or prescriptions or nothing like that. But it's very limited in, in its application. But the people that are in the higher ranks of the Communist Party in Cuba actually enjoy more freedoms and more pleasures and more of all the, the perks of living up there. They're actually drinking finer wines, finer alcohols smoking better cigars, they've got more money, they've got elaborate palaces, and they've got access to medical care that is the best of the best. But the other people down there don't have that. So it's not really communism according to how Frederick Engels or Karl Marx had envisioned it. Same thing one time, I met a man who had grown up in the Soviet Union. He came over here, defected with his family, got involved with uh, some heavy-duty uh, Russian mobsters, so I'm not going to throw his name out there. But I was standing in the pill line to pick up some ibuprofen one time. And he learned, he turned around and looked at me and says, you know what, standing in this line reminds me of Soviet Union. We stood in line for everything, everything from coffee to toilet paper and everything. I feel like I'm in the Soviet Union when I'm in prison here. And that kind of, like, brought, you know caught my attention so i i sought this dude out and i would talk to him a lot and i'd pick his brain about well isn't communism better i mean isn't it like equal for all people and he's like no no it's not you know it's like we work in this factory we work to produce these goods and our benefits that we get from them is that we all get paid the same and we all get according to what we need that's what we get and if we are, are a big shitter and we need three rolls of toilet paper, we're only one person, we're getting one roll. It's the same thing in prison. If you got a lot of bowel problems, you better get a medical reason why you need more than one roll. And if the doctor says, no, nah, you're fine, man, it's, you know, that's why you got each little individual square. You could wipe your ass with each individual square, and it should be plenty of wipes for you. I've heard of this happening before. So it's much the same thing, right? And to rewind it all the way back to the 1800s or the 1700s actually socialism was pretty much founded within the the framework and the and the fire of the french revolution a lot of people started uh, developing all these different forms of socialism and socialistic ideas and it kind of evolved into what frederick Engels and Karl marx had created in being scientific socialism and it was built upon like historical materialism um, 
political ideology and economic ideology. It was a mixture of it all. And it was a design to basically develop a utopia where everybody was dependent upon the state and the state was the overseer of all these projects that the people would put out. Nobody owned anything. The state owned everything, right? The people produced the goods for the state and the state distributed the goods through trade and whatnot. And the benefit that the people got is the people got everything according to what they needed. A lot of these kids and everything nowadays that are pushing democratic socialism, there's many different brands of it. You've had, you have democratic socialism, revolutionary socialism, scientific socialism, national socialism, Anything that is state-controlled is considered to be socialism. And a lot of people like to say, well, it's not like that in Europe. Europe's got all this and got this and this and that. But Europe is like little tiny countries that practice like a, um, a mixture of capitalism and social democracy, not to the point to where Karl Marx and Frederick Engels envisioned it. And, and it doesn't really go far enough to be of any use to a country as big as the United States. It would have to be a larger scale. That's why Leninism and Marxism, the communist brand that was in the Soviet Union, was so extreme because it was such a vast area of land. And it needed to be more extreme and it needed to be more totalitarian in order to control such a huge empire like the Soviet Union. It would be much the same if it was here. In smaller portions and smaller brands, I've always told my fellow friends that are communism and communists and Marxists and socialists that it would work in small little pieces and in small little territories with just, you know, a, a handful of people or whatnot. But if you were to bring it and make it a state sponsored economic system, it would collapse the entire country, much like how China's falling apart right now. And now we're going into an election year. And that's why I'm talking about this, because you got a lot of these candidates that are in, their, that are in the Democratic clown car that are talking about socialism. But they're telling you, they're trying to present it to you as Democratic socialism, where everybody gets free health care, everybody gets free college tuition and all that. And they don't really have all the answers and the proper explanation to tell you how it's going to be paid for, because it can't be paid for without incorporating a more extreme form of socialism and control. And this is where they get you. They lock you in. It's like a contract, man. It's like a contract for AT&T, T-Mobile, um, your cable provider, anything, any kind of a service that you get. They're always adding on to it, adding on to it, and you just agree to it because you don't know what's really going on because somebody's fast-talking you on the phone or sending you an email, and you're just, yes, yes, yes. And all this shit's getting added onto you. And next thing you know, you're like, what the fuck is all this? Same thing as going to a doctor. You get all these tests and all these tests and all these tests. Probably a lot of them are unnecessary. Take your car to a shop to get a tune-up. Next thing you know, you had your brakes done, your oil changed and all that. It's the same thing. It starts out as something good and something that benefits everybody, but it moves into something worse. And then the out end result, and it's the same thing that Karl Marx and Frederick Engels said, that all of these socialist ideas have to be the end game of communism, of straight, strict control, state-run economics, father knows best, and when you have that, you have the margin for human error and human greed, and whoever's at the top, the ones that are saying what goes and what doesn't go, they're the ones that are getting all the kickbacks. They're the ones that are living way better than you. And next thing you know, you're working in a factory, right? You're busting your ass for the little bit of crumbs that you get, and there's some guy that's sitting in his stall and he never does not one piece of work ever. And he gets paid the same as you. There's really no room for advancement at all because the class system is completely dissolved. It's like that in prison too. I've worked in the Unicor factory in the federal prison system. Everybody gets paid the same, but you have pay numbers where people get paid more according to the time that you've been in there. Not according to really your ability. You don't get advanced according to your ability you get advanced according to your time. It's, it's a very socialist idea of, of, of pay progression according to your time. But it's not really nothing to, 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 to brag about because it's, it's, it averages out to be you know, a few bucks more than what the next guy gets. But you may get your pay number 
adjusted all the way to its maximum pay number. And there may be another guy in there who's getting paid the same as you, but he ain't doing shit. But he's getting his pay numbers advanced just like you because everybody gets the same. Everybody gets the same. And when you go back to the yard, you are given everything according to your need. When you go through the chow line, all of your servings are one portion servings according to what you need to keep you alive. This is how a, a, a communist economic ideology would work. And in a large country like the United States, it would develop into a police state prison-like living situation where it'd be much like the Soviet Union. So be careful what you wish for. If you think grass is greener on the other side, I want you to, I want you to know that it's not always greener on the other side because all these revolutions and all these coups and all these overthrows and civil wars and everything that have occurred have always been to find that greener grass on the other side. Rarely is it ever found because being humans that we are, there's always going to be that balance of good and bad. And there's always going to be good and bad. There's never, there could never be a utopian society because there's always going to be that greed. There's always going to be that Cain slain Abel type of, of mentality. There's always going to be that person or peoples that want more than what everybody else got. And if they are in the position of power to get that, they will get that. I'm a libertarian. I'm not a Republican conservative. I'm not a Democrat, liberal, progressive, or anything like that. I'm a libertarian. I've said it before. I'll say it again. So don't think I'm bashing communism. I'm not because I'll be the first to admit that communism and socialism does work on a very, very small scale. It does. I would be lying to you if I told you that it don't. It works probably in a country like Norway, where their population is about as big as the population of Nebraska. But in a country like the United States, where there's so many people, and there's so many people coming here all the time, there's no way it can effectively work and provide what it says that it's going to provide. So if you want to know what it feels like to live in a socialist co country or a communist country, just go out and, and, and go to prison, and you will learn real fast what it's like to live in something like that. And it may change your mind, because you will find... Much to the belief of a lot of these people that are out there pushing for prison reform and everything like that, and some of them actually forget what prison was actually like when they're joining this, this progressive side of politics and pushing a lot of these ideas that a lot of us that actually were became completely aware of our surroundings in prison, a lot of us are very libertarian-minded because we know what communism looks like and we know what state-run control of a system really looks like. So you heard it here. This is how communism compares to prison. This is what could possibly be the outcome of the political upheaval that's in this country. A revolution that could go one side or the other. It could either go far right, which would be something along the lines of what fascism would be. Or it can go far left, which is much along the lines of what Lenin Marxist type of communism totalitarianism looks like in any extreme case it's both going to collapse it's not going to be a pretty sight the best bet for all of you out there is to become more libertarian and we'll get into what the idea of libertarianism that I have not this phony ass all these republicans that jump ship in the republican party and join the libertarian party's idea is because if you really look into their beliefs and their Ideas, it's not really li real libertarianism because they still don't believe that felons have the right to vote. A real libertarian believes that felons have a right to vote. That process uh, We'll get into that another time. But just remember, communism is much like prison. And communism is prison because you're controlled by the state. If you want to have that, go, go right ahead. But there's going to be a lot of people who are going to fight it. So what's going to happen is it's going to be a revolutionary form of Marxism that, that'll be the result, that'll move away from democratic socialism, and there's going to be a lot of fucking chaos, man, bloodshed and all that stuff. A lot of these rednecks out there, they ain't falling for it. It's going to be a lot of shit, and maybe I might be somewhere else. Maybe I might be in Canada or Greenland or Virgin Islands or somewhere else if that happens. Costa Rica, who knows? 
But I don't want to be in the middle of that shit because it ain't my fight. And it shouldn't be your fight either. So listen to Big JD when it comes to this. I've actually lived in a communist country. It was called the BOP and it was called the California Department of Corrections Republic. Prison break raw, uncut, uncensored, no holds barred, non sugar code, not politically correct, all up in your face, slapping you with that dick of reality, and we out.